Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video, Rebuilding My Relationship With My Daughter, 13. So to cut a long tale short, I had an affair. My daughter was the one who found me with the other guy in the act. It had been the worst day of our life. I'm not going to justify the affair because I know it was wrong. My daughter had always been a daddy's girl, and she quickly informed her father of what she had seen. That was more than a year ago. I moved out for a bit, and my spouse and I decided to give it a go. I simply want to see my family again. I really regret inflicting such pain on them both. My husband is making an effort. Some days he can hardly hold his hatred for me, while other days he wants to make it work and tries to forgive me. It's a thrill ride. My daughter, on the other hand, is considerably more reliable. She despises me. For the last year, every second of every day. I've had some excellent days with my spouse, but none with her. When I moved out, she wouldn't talk to me at all. She wouldn't return my calls, messages. She refused to go anywhere with me, and now that I've moved back in, she won't speak to me except to yell at me that she hates me, that I wrecked her life, that I'm a war, so and so on. If my husband and I spend any time alone together, she interrupts and demands his attention. If we sit on the couch next to each other, she will push herself in between us and cling to her father. She is constantly telling him that he should divorce me, that she will love with him, that they don't need me, and if we try to go out together, she will call him crying and begging him to come home. She is the light of his life. So every time she does anything like this, he runs to her. We've attempted family counseling, but we're not making any headway she refuses to engage, and he's not even sure he can forgive me. It was all too much the other day, and I burst into tears in front of her, begging her to forgive me. She yelled at me telling me she despised me, that she was delighted I was in pain, that she wanted me to suffer, that she would never forgive me, that I had wrecked her life, and that she hoped I would die. She is furious. She despises me more than her father. I understand I deceived her as well. I recognize I was selfish and I know I'm a bad guy. I don't think life is worth living after betraying the two people I care about the most in the world and ruining all of our lives. Sometimes I believe we'd be better off if I simply died. Perhaps she is correct. I'm not sure I deserve to be her mother anymore, and I certainly don't deserve my husband. Is she ever going to forgive me? And if you're going to tell me what a horrible person I am for cheating, believe me, I already know, and nothing anybody can say to me will make it any worse than what I've already heard. Update. I spoke with my husband today about implementing some of the suggestions in this article. It went swimmingly. He agrees that we must do something different. We are going to substitute individual therapy for family counseling for her. I offered to discontinue my IC so he could process the trauma, but he stated he'd rather I continued in IC and figured out why I cheated and developed stronger coping strategies. He stated he'd go when he was satisfied I dealt with it appropriately. We went out as a family today. It was almost typical. He appeared content, and she wasn't yelling at me, so that's something. I got home and sobbed. We were nearly back to being a regular family. Almost. Story 2. Cheating GF. Hello everyone, I just discovered that my girlfriend had cheated on me, and I wanted to share my tale and get your opinions on it. I'm 36, and she's 37. Long story short, I've known her since we were in college, nearly 20 years, and we were really close back then. I'd always had a thing on her, but never pursued her for a variety of reasons. But the sensations were always there, and I could tell she did as well. Fast forward to the summer of 2021. We've all grown up, we'd remained friends and would sometimes speak, and she comes to town for a conference and wants to meet up for dinner. We hang out every night she's in town, and on the final night she's here, she expresses a deep love for me, that I'm her soulmate, and that she truly wants to be with me and create something serious, and she doesn't want me playing around if we're together. We reside in two separate cities in the same state, a few hundred miles apart yet just a one-hour flight apart. I'm overjoyed because I've been feeling this way for a long time but it's never worked out. We agree to speak about it and attempt to get together as soon as possible. We eventually make arrangements to visit one other after a few months have passed due to demanding job schedules. We go to the happiest spot on the planet and it's incredible. There were some jitters at initially, but we had a great day together. We'd finally gotten close and the fireworks were genuine. We didn't say anything formal when we left and just played it nice like hey. I can't wait to see you again, let's get together soon. 
She wants to come down and spend New Year's Eve with me as soon as I get home. I'm ecstatic and can't think of anybody else I'd rather spend the day with. We've been texting and talking on the phone for the whole month, and I'm beginning to think, yeah, maybe this long-distance thing can actually work. While I'm on dating apps, as is she, and conversing with females, I'm not going on any dates. I'm just keeping the water warm in case things don't go as planned. I removed my dating apps a few days before she arrived because I knew I simply wanted to be with her. At this moment, everything is okay, nothing is exclusive, and we are not an official entity. Fast forward to New Year's Eve, she arrives, and we enjoy the nicest three days. Incredible connection, really passionate in the bedroom, and overall a lovely time soaking in each other's presence. I ask her if she wants to be my girlfriend before she departs. I'm overjoyed when she says yes. In front of me, she deletes her dating app. We discuss being monogamous and exclusive, and she is fine with it. She returns home, and the first few days are fantastic. Then, one night on the phone, she informs me that some males are testing her and deeming her after she shared some photos of us on social media. So I ask, what are you saying to them? And how are you responding to them? She goes, yeah, just to make it quick. Then she tells me about this man with whom she's had an on-again, off-again relationship for the last six years, who reached out to her and was overjoyed for us. That made me very uncomfortable, and when I informed her about it, she assured me not to worry and that she'd never spend time with him alone. Only with other individuals if there was a work event with former colleagues. They used to work together, but she's moved on to another field. So I'm beginning to feel nervous about it, but I trust her and go on. A week later, she'll have a drink with some former co-workers before traveling to Costa Rica for a week to spend time with her father. I say okay, have a good time, I'm going to bed, but text or phone me when you're on your way home. So I never hear back, and I get that strange pit in my stomach sensation. I ultimately persuade myself that I'm hallucinating and go to sleep about 2 a.m. Nothing when I woke up the following morning. So I call her, and she sounds strange on the phone. I inquire about her night, and she replies that it was nice, that she had a few drinks and met up with friends. I could sense she was in a hurry to go to the airport, so we ended the conversation and I felt better about it. Over the following several weeks, I have a strong suspicion that something occurred that night, but she denies everything and claims she just loves me, blah blah blah. After a few weeks and a trip to meet her parents, I return home, and for some reason, ask her the following day if anything occurred the night before she departed for her vacation, and whether the guy she was seeing on and off was there. Finally, she told me the truth. She had cheated on me for closure and to conclude a chapter in her life. I got the impression she meant it, so I asked a lot of questions and felt like I received everything I needed to proceed ahead in a relationship with her. I gave her another opportunity, but she refused to stop communicating with this other individual. Because his father was ill and he was there for her through her dark days or whatever nonsense, but she would never see him again. I tried to accept and move on fast, but I was so irritated. We got together for Valentine's Day two weeks later, and it was meant to be the start of a new chapter in our relationship. We discussed the elephant in the room, decided to move on, and promised to be honest with each other. The next day, she asks when the last time I had an STD test, and I tell her it was the previous week. Note, we didn't have after she cheated on me until V-Day weekend. She was perplexed and asked why, to which I replied that it was for my own peace of mind. For the next few days, she kept pressing me for the truth, so I finally told her after she assured me that everything was fine, that a few days after she told me she cheated on me, I woke up with a bump on my tongue, and then I freaked out and wanted to get tested to make sure I was okay, which I was few, and that if she hadn't cheated on me, this wouldn't have happened. She flipped and stated I felt she was unclean, I wouldn't have slept with her again if I believed she was dirty and broke up with me. She said she couldn't trust me. Then she says we should take some time to think about what we want and maybe reconnect in the future and that all she wants to do is be with me. Should I just block her, telling her it's all over? I'm dealing with some intense feelings.